Welcome to another episode of Off Plan and Investments Unplugged 2, the segment of our podcast where we answer your questions about property investment. I'm Simon Baker, Managing Director here at House and & House, and once again, I'm joined by Rennie Sanger, Off Plan and Investment Manager. Today, we're going to be talking about apartments versus villas for investment. We've had some questions come in about, you know, what to buy. You've decided you want to invest in Dubai. Yep. So thanks again, Rennie, for joining me today. Thanks um, for having me. Supply and demand. It's, it's a bit hot topic one. in Dubai. It always is. Yeah. Um, so here we've got apartments versus villas. Uh, we'd also, we're going to throw in townhouses as well, just Why not? as a sort of hot stepping stone between, between the two. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, yeah, of course, you know, Dubai market's very much driven on supply and demand, isn't it? You know, always the is. population's been growing very quickly after COVID. Yeah. Um, the Dubai, you know, government have been, have come out with some quite aggressive uh, targets Initiates, for population. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah, obviously yeah. in order to try and aim for that, you know, 7.8 million, I heard was the latest number I've, I've heard. Heard, um, which I think previously was 5.8, so they've upgraded yeah. it. Yeah, um, much like many targets, they sort of stretch, stretch goals there. Yeah. They've increased that target. And then in order to try and achieve that target, as you just touched on, they've got loads of initiatives yeah. um, to bring people here. So yeah, it's, I guess that's happen. not really the, the point of today's thing, but in order to in order to hit that, you know, to meet, the, meet that demand for property, Definitely. Well, that's, um, we're here to help. So, <laughs> so in 2023, we for, well, for 2023, I should say, we, yeah. we released, at the end of 23, we released a market report for Off Plan. Yes, we did. Um, and it, one quite interesting thing, which I think a lot of people didn't really realise, was a percentage of new units that have been sold Off Plan, so released yeah. to the market, not necessarily handed over, but, yeah. but sort of plan, and sold, for yeah. apartments, townhouses, and villas. Have you got some? Have you got the numbers for me on those? I do. So um, <clears throat> believe it or not, apartments actually made up 87% of all the traffic transactions through 2023. Um, mm. Townhouses represented 11% okay. and villas actually only represented just 1% of all properties sold in 2023. Wow, okay. So that's quite some numbers I think might surprise some people. I, it definitely, I think it probably even through me, you know, yeah. being in the market, you don't realise that, especially the villas, right? Because yeah. you don't realise, I mean, even now, probably even a bit of a shortage of townhouse communities. We're I'm actually actively looking for options for some clients mm. now, but especially the villas, you don't realise how hard they are to come by, particularly in the off-plan segment of the market. Mm. And I think now as we're seeing more and more people, you know, I say Dubai is almost like this cycle, right? And I'm kind of going through the motions myself where you first get to Dubai, you are often find yourself in apartments straight away to kind of mm -hmm. get a taste or a flavour for the different areas. They tend to be a bit more centrally located. And then before you know it, Dubai is planned for a lot of people when they come here is two to three years, make some money and go home. Mm. But then the lifestyle gets good to you, tax free, sun, sea and sand and all the yeah. rest of it. And then you marry two kids and a mortgage later. So eventually <laughs> you find yourself needing to go through the townhouse and villa sort of cycle. And I guess yeah. that's why we're seeing so much more demand for these, but yet the supply doesn't seem to be mm. matching up. So it's a, it's could be- really I guess it's a sort of perfect storm for a, for a villa community, isn't it? As you've yeah. come out of COVID or maybe got into COVID, yeah. a lot of people suddenly started, you know, this whole like work from home work from home idea you know the idea of people wanting more green space yeah suddenly a villa community or a nice townhouse community yeah, 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 for the sure. demand shot up didn't it which it meant people were suddenly i guess if you were stuck in a one bedroom flat on your own or with your wife you might suddenly think hang on a second we didn't need we didn't spend a lot of much time indoors or together yeah, course, or anything yeah, yeah, else yeah, yeah, and suddenly yeah, yeah. you're like right we need yeah. a bit more space yeah. um and i guess that's where villa communities were the first to pick up price wise Definitely. after covid you know were they the one with all these government initiatives obviously which we yeah, talked about separately but but they were the first to probably you know spacious townhouses and villas were picked up in terms of demand absolutely um, and i guess also on top of that even before covid obviously we were you know working on off-plan investments you know last few years together and, and the reality is the supply of townhouses and then villas were were significantly less weren't there always always the case um, and i think we realized that you know as you said especially through covid space became the ultimate commodity right so everyone was looking yeah. for open spaces or even pools and gardens and so on and so forth and then we just see these prices shot up like astronomically almost and the demand has not necessarily been slowing down since it just seems like it's just took off and mm. now people are still wanting that. That that trend hasn't changed. I guess the other thing since, you know, there was obviously slowdown in the market, 15 to 20, should we say. So yeah, 2015, 2020. So during that time, there were some apartments, uh, sorry, some apartments, some townhouses launched the market um, in terms of supply, which have yeah. obviously been handing over the last few years, yeah. but certainly not many new villa communities. You could probably count them on one hand, couldn't you? No, um, exactly that. And then more recently, that that's why I guess the demand we've seen is very strong. When you've had new off-plan, 
villa community so certainly there's certainly more you know some are quite high end so they're not cheap unfortunately they're no, not in okay. a, they're not everyone's in a position where they can be looking at you know six maybe seven million dirham villa upwards yeah, 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 yeah. but i do feel quite strongly that if you're in a position to do so then being able to stretch for that detached villa if you can afford it yeah i think it does make a, a very sound long-term investment just from a purely from a supply, supply perspective. Demand perspective you think yeah. about it logically is yeah, one you've got one villa versus you know 11 townhouses for example yeah. and 87 apartments yeah so it's, 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 it's quite there's quite some quite strong numbers there pushing me to yeah. think that a, a villa is a villa's actually quite a good bet if you can buy something on a nice size plot and everything else agreed and as you said the, those launches are very few and far between and we've we've seen a couple the most recent one with uh, miras and acres yeah. um, in between ranches one ranches two but and that's done you know tremendously well and again, offering, for example, a three bedroom standalone, which are very hard to come by. You know, often when we see standalone, they usually at least start with a minimum of four bedroom, if mm, not even true. larger. So to see some of these sort of floor plans in three bedrooms and G plus one and G plus two, these are sometimes configurations that we don't often see in the market, which again, I think attributes towards the demand going towards stuff like this versus I mean, look, I don't think we need to discount the value in apartments. I think they'll do mm. continue to do tremendously well. I just think if you're looking for opportunity in the market as a shrewd investor, then the odds are in the favour of a villa mm. or a town yeah. for that matter. Yeah, no, no, for sure, no, 100%. And I think as well, you know, when we're looking at, we look at investments and obviously rather than just saying, okay, we like this developer, let's go and sell this particular one. Yeah. We obviously work with a huge array of different developers. Yeah. Um, we tend to handpick the best ones that we feel, you know, will be the best long-term, secure, safe, sure. you know, yeah, sensible investment yeah. for someone. But ultimately, we really trying to pinpoint value for people, certainly from my end. So, yeah. and I always feel like if we as a team can really search for those properties that actually would be worth more if they're ready today, yeah. I think that's quite rare, I'd like to say. I don't know what you think. No, In terms definitely. of, you know, like mo a lot of the projects yeah. that come along, I almost feel like, well, if it was ready today, would it be worth that much? Maybe it'd be worth five or ten percent less, yeah. potentially. And it can be like that. And I think, it, like you said, it's very hard to find certain projects. And they, I mean, there are some great projects that we sell that we think will confidently appreciate during the course of construction. Uh, and that's fine. But there are some rare opportunities where you find that if that literally existed today, you'd be selling it for 500,000 dollars more, a million dollars more in some cases. So, mm. and, and when you find them, you, you need to grab it with both hands because they don't, as we've seen, they don't last long. Yeah, there's a, I mean, and when it comes to Villa's huge demand for us, yeah. but I, I feel, yeah, I do feel feel very strongly that if we can find someone something that, yeah. you know, rather than, you know, you know, being optimistic and hopefully it might appreciate yeah, and yeah, inshallah yeah, the sure. market will go up 20%, yeah, yeah. but actually if it was today, as you've just said, and, yeah. you know, we're buying a villa for someone, it's a three bedroom independent villa at five and a half million. If the equivalent villa in that case next door in Rabin Ranch is yeah. maybe is currently selling for, for six and a half for a villa that's 20 years old, then there's a huge opportunity for there sure. for you, someone to make capital growth. Yeah. Even if the market go, you know, doesn't go, it doesn't appreciate at all. And I yeah. think that that's how I would feel more confident buying yeah. a villa. Um, or, you know, especially when you're investing such a large amount of money. Absolutely. I think that, that's the only way I would feel really confident, rather yeah, than on a, on a sort of whim and a prayer. You actually hope you actually know you've done. We've done our numbers. It's based on supply and demand, and we know the demand is very strong. Yeah. We know the supply is very low, and we know that based on current market, and obviously we use tools like Property Monitor, which you, you sure. guys use on a daily basis. Yeah. To, to really show someone, well, here's the actual facts and figures. You know, don't believe me, yeah. believe the land department data. <laughs> absolutely. Um, no, I think you make a compelling point. Yeah, absolutely. I think just on that, um, however, the apartments, again, a lot of it, to go back to the original questions, apartments or villas almost, it's horses for courses, right? I mean, I think if, if, if you need to be in a central location, if you work in DIFC, then you know you may need to be in a more central location and you need to get mm. quick accessibility or be on the metro line or what have you. So yes, if if you're looking for a house, or if you're just looking from an investment perspective and you can afford a villa or townhouse, superb. Mm. You can still do really well with apartments. It just boils down to reverse engineering the process. What is the main objective? And we can find you a suited option, but mm. Across the board, townhouses and villas, is, as you can see in the numbers, there's a shortage of, and you do really well really quickly.
Hmm. No, sure. I think you're completely right. I think there's, it is very much, it needs to be tailored to the person. I yeah. mean, of course, if it's for end use, you need to, need to be where you want to live. Absolutely. Don't you? Where yeah, you enjoy. Like primary, and actually, yeah. yes, we want to get someone a really secure investment, but ultimately, yeah. if it's going to be your home, the first thing should be that. Of course, you've also got, um, you know, in terms of yields and investment yields, people say, well, how we know which is better? Well, yeah. the other thing to consider is that obviously apartments do tend to have a quite a lot of high service charge than yeah. villas. For sure. So villas actually, from that perspective, villas and townhouses tend to have a service charge of around three dirham a square foot. Some, yeah. some developers do on the plot, some do on the built-up area. Yeah. Whereas apartments tend to be 15 upwards. Really. Upwards, yeah. I mean, so, well, there's no real limit on the other end. It mm. depends if you're buying a hotel residence and so on. But yeah, we've seen cases of 60, 17, some of these addresses and so on. So yeah. yeah. So, so be, but even a normal kind of apartment, where in a villa community, arguably yeah. in somewhere established like ranches, for example, or meadows, yeah. you'd still have a pool and security and a, Absolutely, you know, maybe yeah. not a gym in some of them, but you'd have parks and you know, playgrounds and, and all so these on, kind yeah. of things. So and so actually the, from a... From a, from a ROI uh, perspective. Yeah, an ROI perspective. A lot of the time, they, you know, the the the, uh, the uh, service charge doesn't eat too much into your rental return, and actually, you get a very you even with a villa. Some people are shocked. You know, I think yeah, we had course, we yeah. recently we saw some villas. Um, that were just handing over, that were renting out for, I think there was a rent of a million dirham on a 12 million dirham villa. Well, that's almost 10%, and that's on the current price. Crazy, right? On the yeah. price the guys bought it for, uh, it's probably like it's probably like 15 14, or 20%. 15, yeah, or something. Yeah. An absolutely crazy number, isn't it? So, it is. so some of the returns can be very good. I don't think yeah. it's, a, it's a case of saying one's better than the other. Yeah. I would say certainly, I don't know what your opinion, but from what I've seen, if you wanted just a just a rental income from a cheaper property, then the properties at like half a million up to about one and a half million always yep. do well on either monthly rentals, short Correct, terms, yeah. holiday lets, all that kind of thing. Yeah, and again, and probably a misconception at times. And I know you're probably in favour of this as well, but townhouses and villas, much to I suppose. I don't think everyone believes it, but they actually do pretty well on holiday rentals as well, or short term mm. rentals, I should say, because I think holiday rentals we, we use as a term and people probably look at that as your holiday makers who are here for sun, sea and sand. But there are often a big pool of people who perhaps maybe doing a renovation to some of these villas. Like we've said that our mm. ranch is sure, yeah. 20 years old and maybe take a two, three mm. months to do a whole a rehaul of the project. If in that situation you've got a family of four, you're probably not going to get right. away with living in a hotel. Flat, are you? Right? Hotel, so, so then yeah. you need to have, find another villa, yeah. in which case you are going to there be there for the next couple of months. So sometimes mm. you can still look at townhouses and villas as a short term short term mm. option. Um, but although I don't think the mass market would usually no, I didn't mass market, and I guess because of that there yeah. is a market. So because right, then, because yeah. most people will say, oh, that's a crazy idea. Yeah, I've done it myself before and rented out yeah. a, a small townhouse um, on a monthly basis and did very very well. And the supply and demand again, as we would come back to supply thing, and demand, yeah. we have to look what's happening in the market. Yeah. Maybe fortune favors the brave sometimes. And if it, if there isn't if there isn't that many available, like you can look on Property Finder, and there yeah. is actually a lot of people don't realize this, but you know a lot of as you mentioned, a lot of yeah. the leases are professional lets not really holidays Correct. it's not someone staying in it for a week no. we're talking about people doing it for six months, months? Or, yeah, or when course. they first move to Dubai Dubai's yeah. a very transit place lots of people move here yeah. and in the first few months you'd probably in the UK, you might stay in a hotel for a week but then if you hadn't decided where you wanted to rent annually which is probably quite a big decision for people who've for just sure. moved yeah. you'd probably want to stay somewhere for a few months and just test out the community yeah, really. before you buy them right? yeah exactly so, that, so there is a good demand any of the villas we've had on have done very very well from yeah. a month, month certainly monthly rental perspective definitely um, um, and, and again, it comes to supply and demand because there's not there's not that many of them. One, the last question we had on this was, you know, what I know it's a bit black and white, but what's yeah. a better investment? Lots of apartments or one villa? Which would you go for, really? Um, I would. It's a tricky one now. I'd like to have the problem. Um, <laughs> yeah, a, it's a nice problem to have. It is. It? So it is one mega villa or some apartments, and I guess obviously the, I would it, probably go with lots of apartments, just in the sense where. And I always think about things in a rainy day sort of situation. And if, yeah. for example, I need a bit of money, I could sell one or two apartments, yeah. take that, that cash and still have something generating me some income. Mm, yeah. Whereas you put all your eggs in one basket, so to speak, you might only need half the balance, but it's all tied up in one asset. So once you sell it, it's gone. Yeah. And the buyback mm. opportunity is often difficult, right? You might have got a fantastic price. Yeah. You managed to recoup those funds. You want to go back in again and invest, but the prices have soared. And mm. you might have lost that opportunity to get back into the market. I think that's quite sensible. I think look, I think if you you know obviously perfect situation, you'd probably do a bit of both. Yeah, you? No, but, exactly. If that but was yeah, option. if you're looking at rent, if you're looking at purely on rental income, yeah. those smaller, say a million dirham, circa million dirham properties, yeah. will you know potentially we've got some at the moment where we're looking at eight to 
nine percent rental returns, which yeah. is huge, isn't it? and that's Definitely. net in someone's pocket without yeah. any tax provided they're in them in personal names. Um, and and this is absolutely fantastic return. And I think on that basis, yeah, you're probably yeah. right there. You spread having a few that you weren't worried that if one's yeah. empty, especially if you've got a mortgage. I think if you, of course, if yeah. it was empty and suddenly you've got bills to pay on it, one yeah, big villa sure. might look a bit scary. And um, I think so. Again, it does come down to the personal situation. We can try and assess people's portfolio whether you've got yeah. one property or a hundred properties, and try and work out which is which would work better for you yeah. based on your you know current financial situation. Definitely. And also, I think it does vary depending on what stage people are at some people someone who's looking at retirement probably cares a lot more about income, income than, yeah. than someone else who's maybe, maybe 20 daring. years before yeah. who's, who's looking for to try and build that property portfolio definitely t- until retirement at which yeah. point they want to return so there's yeah. quite a there's quite a few different bits to consider I think. agreed like with most things it's all relative i guess really right so it's just understanding people's personal preferences and requirements mm. and assessing what's the best fit for you but um yeah. Clear as mud, I guess. <laughs> Clear as mud, exactly. I know. I'm touching back onto that capital appreciation thing. I guess ultimately, yes, there is opportunities. Like yeah. certainly, when we've established at the moment, there are some off-plan options where we know that there are villa communities. If it was ready today, you would definitely make a capital For growth. Sure. So I think yeah. that's that's exciting from a capital growth perspective. Arguably, yes, with the supply of 87 percent more, 87 percent apartments and one percent independent villas, yeah. there is a chance that certainly some of the cheaper apartments may not appreciate. Which I think yeah. when you means when you buy them, yeah. you've got to be really careful to buy ones that are good quality from a good developer in a good location that will as you said not look terrible after seven months of handover that will still look nice for seven years hopefully yeah for sure absolutely Uh, and again as we said it kind of boils down to what your personal preference is I mean you could do really healthy ROI the property may not appreciate that much in value over the years but if you pick up 7 to 10% ROI you might not care if, yeah. if you and that's in it, 10 I think years arguably, time you, you know, pay, you pay people the say to me oh right? in London and my property's doubled yeah. and, and then but then the problem is you can't release that equity because you'd get tax capital gains there we well, go. at least here if you get your 7-8% in your pocket and it can pay for your kids to go to school then suddenly the, uh, the world exactly. seems a better place Definitely. and I think that's probably quite a good quite a place for us to end today I and then so. say, yeah. say to people well, thank you so much for joining us today and if you do have any questions or you'd like more information on any of these topics please give us a shout already thanks very much really thank you Cheers.